Hey, good morning, boys and girls. It's Mr. Whitley, and today's lesson is for Tuesday the 14th. So hopefully you were either able to pick up your packet yesterday or you're able to get your new packet today based on what your last name is. Now I know a lot of you guys have been using our geodes to answer those questions in our packet, and you're probably sick of reading the same geodes. So good news, yesterday I sent a link to your parents for a new geode. It's all about the digestive tract and how our body breaks down food and how we use it. Um, and there's a read aloud version that you can flip through on your computer or on your uh, phone. And there's also a video read aloud that you can listen to. But you can use that geode lesson for your, um, to, to answer those questions for geodes and for the reading section as well. And they'll give us new geode uh, books that I can send links to you guys as well. So we'll be able to use those in the future. That's good news. Well, one thing that we're gonna go over today is something a little different. We're gonna talk about multi-syllable words and we're gonna do kind of a matching game. It was a game that I was gonna do with you guys in class, but obviously we're all at home, so we're gonna try and do it at home. So if you have a piece of paper, why don't you pause this video and write down two rows, A-R-S-H-A-M-A-B-R-E-S on one side, Pu, which you guys thought was hilarious, C-U-E, G-U-E, and Sent on the other side. And then we're gonna match these things up. We're gonna clap them out, and then we're gonna match them up, okay? So pause the video, write them down, and start it back up. All right, I'm assuming that you guys have written them down by now. So looking at these syllables here, we're gonna match up the ones that seem to make sense. So R, who? Maybe not, that's an interesting word. R Q? Mm, no. R U? Oof, that sounds pretty good, but we always check all of our options to make sure there's not a better one. R sit. I'm definitely going to go with R U. So I'm going to make my line. I'm going to clap it out. R U. It's a two syllable word. If we go down here and write it down, we see why. A-R-G-U-E. We scoop the first part and scoop the second part. This is one syllable, this is a second. R, it's an R-controlled vowel there. In U-E, it's a, a double vowel syllable. But we see that it's two, two syllables right off the bat because there are two vowels, or at least one vowel and one set of vowels, okay? All right, we got two out of the way. So let's do this one. Shampoo. Sounds pretty good. Let's make sure there's not a better choice. Shampoo or sham scent. Obviously, it's going to be shampoo. So we're going to write it down. Shampoo. After you've written it down, let's clap it out. Shampoo. We split the first syllable between the two consonants, M and P, and our second um, scoop as well. That's a short A, sh, a, a, sham, that's a closed syllable. Double vowel team, circle it and put that D there. So shampoo. Ab, Q, never heard of that one. Absent, yeah. I feel like we've been absent for a while. So ab since. So we have two syllables. Ab since. We have the short a. Ab. It's closed. Sent. <laughs> the shorty. That's closed as well. Okay. We could underline our blend there too. And then, so if we've done absent, it only gives us 
one more rescue. Rescue. We're going to split it between the two consonants. Eh, eh, short E. Closed syllable. U E, double vowel T. Okay? So you can always try that. Your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa could come up with some double vowel words for you and split them up and mix them up. You can come up with your own and maybe have your brother or sister, even your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa, try and figure out how they go together and then show them how to mark them up and to clap out those two syllable words. Well, over here, we're still talking about data. We're still in chapter 10, um, section six. And so today we're talking about, if you were in my class, we'd be talking about answering story problems using data. So up here, hopefully you notice that we have four months, and over here we have four measurements. This refers to the amount of rainfall. That means how much rain or snow, precipitation in general, that we're getting. So up September, we got four inches of rainfall. Not really, this is just make-believe. October, three inches. November, two inches. December, received one inch, okay? So over here, we're gonna make a bar graph. And you'll notice that I left our title blank and our labels blank as well. But I did make a bar graph. Uh, I started off with obviously zero. We went up to one, two, three, four, and five. I went five just because I wanted to make sure we could at least get our highest one in there. And if we wanted to add anything as well. Underneath we put our four months. So there's gonna be four columns. And then before we do anything, we wanna go through and we want to label this. So if we're talking about rainfall, what can we say as far as our title? So take a moment and think about that. So we know we're talking about rainfall. We're going to talk about rainfall. Maybe we're talking about in Mad River in this case. We could say, or we could even say rainfall in our town. So rainfall in our town. Over here, what could we do as far as a label? Well, what information is it telling us here? We have September, October, November, December. We're gonna say it's the months, obviously. If we wanted to go even further, we could say months uh, of rainfall or of recorded rainfall. And then over here, we have numbers. Well, what do these numbers refer to? They're up here, they're rainfall. They're talking about inches. So we're recording the information of rainfall in inches. So we're gonna say amount in inches, or we can say rain in inches. So weird to write sideways. So we have our title, we have our labels here, and then we need to go in and fill it out. So September, we have four inches, so if we're making a bar graph, we start at zero. There's one, two, three, and four. For October, we have three inches. In November, we have two, and December we have one. Now I'm going pretty fast just because I want to get this information out to you, but if you want to stop the video and write this down yourself, that's a great idea, okay? And if just going on, the big thing we want to do is we want to look for information that we could answer using our bar graph. Well, let's see, let's pretend that we're saying, hmm, Daniel recorded the amount of rainfall in his uh, town for four months. So you see our four months here. Um, 
how did the amount of rainfall change from September to December? So if Daniel recorded the amount of rainfall um, over four months, and he wants to see how it has changed, the big thing is we're trying to find the difference or the change in the rainfall over the months. So if you look at this, we start off with September and we go down to December. What do you notice from this bar graph? That's the cool thing about a bar graph. The bar graph shows you, you can visually see what is happening here with the information. Well, we can see in September we have the highest amount and in December we have the lowest amount. So we could say, hey, um, the amount of rainfall decreases from September to December. That's one way we could put it. What do you notice though? There's a pattern. If you notice, as we go each month, the amount of rainfall in inches decreases or becomes less by one inch each month. So it starts out with four inches, then it goes down by one inch to three inches, and down by one inch to two inches, down by one inch to um, one inch. Or we could even say, if we look at how much we had in September, we had four inches in this September and one in December. We could say that the amount of rainfall decreased by three inches from September to December. All of those ways give us information. All of those answers are true. All of those answers are different ways that we can say similar information. And you can do the same thing at home. You can come up with your own bar graph. We've come up with uh, several, maybe our favorite food, our favorite ice cream, the toys we have, um, the TV shows that we're watching, things like that. So see if you can come up with your own bar graph and see if you can come up with something where there's a change. Maybe it increases, maybe it decreases. Maybe it's the amount of uh, time you spend outside. Maybe when it's cooler, you spent less time outside, but as it gets warmer, you spend more time. Or how many books you've read, or how many video games you played each day. So hopefully that's something that you guys can come up with at home. And I'm going to go ahead and pause, and we're going to start our read aloud and our uh, PAS lesson. I'll talk to you in a moment.